Hello, I'm Rich Bellavo and I'm a technology specialist with Microsoft Dynamics. Today we'll be talking about and demonstrating the connector for Microsoft Dynamics. The connector for Microsoft Dynamics is a purpose-built technology that enables integration between Microsoft Dynamics CRM, both on-premises and online, and your Microsoft Dynamics ERP solution. The connector is intended to be used in an implementation where Microsoft Dynamics CRM is used to manage Salesforce automation by tracking leads, opportunity pipeline, and potentially entering sales orders or issuing quotes to customers, and where your Microsoft Dynamics ERP system is used to perform accounting functions and manage your order fulfillment and invoicing processes. The connector for Microsoft Dynamics is designed to be easy to install and maintain. It runs as an NT service within your internal server infrastructure, minimizing architectural overhead. It leverages web services technology for both CRM and ERP systems to bi-directionally integrate data. The connector contains robust exception mitigation by providing administrators with detailed logs and notifications throughout the integration process. Out of the box, Microsoft Dynamics has provided you with an extensive lineup of adapter maps that should meet most of your business needs. You can see that we have the ability to bi-directionally integrate customers and accounts as well as sales orders and orders from both ERP and CRM systems. The development team has also configured the out-of-the-box connector to use your ERP system as the master database for all other integrated entities. Let's jump into a demonstration. For today's demo, I'm going to be using Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online and connecting it to Microsoft Dynamics GP. However, the features and functionality I'll be demonstrating carry over to the on-premises edition of Microsoft Dynamics CRM and to Microsoft Dynamics NAV and Microsoft Dynamics AX on the ERP side. We will see an account created in CRM, submit it to accounting for credit approval and updating, and we'll see an order created in CRM and submitted to the ERP for fulfillment. So let's go ahead and jump into Dynamics CRM. We'll go on to the sales area here. And I have a pre-entered uh, lead that we have in the system here. And for those of you that are familiar with lead management within Microsoft Dynamics CRM, you know that you can qualify leads and actually create accounts and opportunities at the same time. So what I'll do ahead and do is I'll qualify Lily here and ensure that we create an account upon this qualification and we'll make sure that we open that newly created record when we qualify this record. So we'll click OK. CRM is now going ahead and marking this lead as qualified. It's also creating a, an account within the CRM system itself. We can see that we have Aronson International and Lily uh, was our, uh, our, our contact at the organization. Now as a part of the installation of the Dynamics CRM connector, we have installed some a slight a customization solution for Dynamics CRM. This customization incorporates additional functionality into the account and order entities. The customization now notes some fields on the form as required for ERP integration. And we've also added a submit button to the account and order forms that enables transfer of the records to your Microsoft Dynamics ERP system. So let's go ahead and take a look at this newly created account here in CRM. Now it is requesting that we enter in an account number. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type in Aronson001 as an account number. We'll uh, create the relationship for this particular entity as a customer. Now one of the other required fields that we do note by this little plus sign here is the address has to be named. So we'll go ahead and call that primary. And that again is the required field that have, fields that have been added. We'll go ahead and save this particular account right now. So 
So we can see Aronson International as our newly created customer here, I should say account here in CRM. Now what we'll go ahead and do is submit this account to the back office by simply creating or clicking submit. And we can now see that Aronson International We'll save that record. So we've gone ahead and we've created that account here in CRM. I'm going to close this account record now. And I mentioned that we would also be going ahead and creating an order. And in this case, we'll go ahead and pull up one of our existing accounts. I will go ahead and uh, we can see Aronson International, but let's go ahead and, and pick on Aaron Fitz as we customarily do on our GP demonstrations. So we've got Aaron Fitz, he's a customer in our database, both in ERP and CRM. We'll go ahead and create an order for Aaron Fitz. We'll add a new order to Aaron Fitz's record. And we'll just name this new order. And we'll ensure that we have a price list associated with this particular order header and we'll just associate that with a retail price list. Then we can click Save, and by clicking Save, core functionality in CRM automatically generates an order ID for this particular order. Now what we can go ahead and do is add products to this particular order. Now we can get products maybe from an existing opportunity that we have for with Aaron Fitz. In this case, we'll just go ahead and add a new line item to this particular order, new order product. We can use an existing product that resides within the CRM database, which is also synchronized with ERP, or we can use a write-in product. Either will integrate into the ERP system without issue. So we'll select from the drop-down list so you can see the item lineups that we have. Again, all of this data coming from the ERP system. We'll make sure that we have a unit of measure for this particular item and we'll enter in a quantity of 10. So we'll save this individual line item for the order and we can see that we have a total of 1350. Save and close that particular uh, product and now back on our order header area, we can see that we have the ability to recalculate. It'll take a sum of all the individual items that we have on this order, 1350, this order number, and now we'll go ahead and submit that order to the ERP system for fulfillment processing. We can now see that that order has a status of submitted. Let's close out of the order here in CRM. What we'll do now is we'll navigate over into our ERP application. Now as a part of the demonstration we did go ahead and we did create a customer so let's go ahead and click sales and let's refresh this screen just so we can get it. There we go. And we'll look at customers. And we're now in Microsoft Dynamics GP, and we can now see Aronson International. And let's double click on that uh, customer. We can see Aronson International here. Address all the information that came over from our ERP, from the CRM system. Now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up terms or credit limits for uh, individual customers. We can easily do that here in Dynamics GP by assigning a customer class and we'll replace the existing information with that class information or we could go ahead and simply manually enter in uh, credit limits let's say for a uh, hundred thousand dollars maybe there are, or what do we have here ten thousand dollars let's just save it at that click OK so we've gone ahead we've received an, this submitted customer from the CRM system in our ERP solution and we've just now gone ahead and we'll save those changes we've updated that customer information here in our ERP system. We'll 
jump back in CRM in just a moment. Let's close out of this record. And now let's go back to our home page. And we'll take a look at the open orders because we did place an order for Aaron Fitz Electric. So we'll go ahead, take a look at our orders, and we can see today's orders and the order number that came and was generated from Microsoft Dynamics CRM. SD RAM, quantity of 10, 1350 was the total of the invoice. We can now go ahead and if all is correct with this particular order, we can simply go ahead and transfer this order to an invoice. Preview, it does say we have a quantity of 10 being transferred to an invoice and we'll transfer that invoice, I'm sorry, transfer that order into an invoice. And we now have a new invoice number. 2274 for Aaron Fitz Electric for the 1350. So just to illustrate the bi-directional integration that we talked about just a moment ago is we did update our Aronson International record with credit limits. So if all went according to our plan we can now see that Aronson International has a credit limit of $10,000. Again, illustrating the bi-directional integration of Microsoft Dynamics or the connector for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. At this point in time, let's go ahead and take a look at the connector client. Now this is the application that is used to set up and implement and maintain the ongoing integration capabilities of uh, the connector for Microsoft Dynamics. In this home page, you can see real-time monitoring of all the connector status um, for the system. Each connector is visible here as well. In our case, we're looking at Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online 2011 and Microsoft Dynamics GP 2010 and integrating into our companies of Fabricam Inc. and CRM Connector Incorporated. We can see we have individual entities mapped and we have the maps for those individual uh, entities visible here on the screen. And we can see the real-time polling taking place by the progress bars that periodically uh, appear here on the screen. You can see that uh, we have the ability to uh, integrate uh, accounts and customers and customers to account. Each map is a, a one-way integration Let's jump into the um, sales invoice map for uh, this integration. Now, this is the mapping of specific data fields that takes place within the connector. We can see that the bill to addresses directly correspond to bill to addresses in the other um, system. And we can also see that we have the ability to alter or transform the data as it's migrated or connected into the other application. So let's take a real quick look at some of this capability. We can see that we can directly map the data from one application to the other simply by choosing uh, to map from a specific source field. We can also go ahead and use a constant. So if we have orders coming from one system or the other that we'd like to include constant information, we can do that. Or if we'd like to use specific functions or Excel-like functions, we can do that within the adapter as well to transform the data. Perhaps we need to concatenate data or we need to parse data as it goes from one system to the other because in one system the data that resides in one field might, be, might reside in two separate fields in the other. So we have a lot of data transformation capabilities uh, here within the system. One other aspect that's very important to uh, the maps that are located here in the connector is the exception mitigation capabilities and the detailed logging that takes place. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, account information for customers. So we, this is a map that controls the accounts from CRM that will migrate as customers into the application. And we can see that uh, just a moment ago, approximately 10 minutes ago, I created an account in CRM 
and it was integrated successfully. One record has been written to the ERP system successfully. So we can see that integration took place in real time. Now if we take a look at all these individual maps, we do have the ability to set up polling frequencies or how often does the data integrate from the app, one application to another. We can go ahead and have the data integrate once or set up a recurrence, whether we want every 30 seconds, in this case I, that's what I used for my demonstration, perhaps minutes, hours, days, weeks, or if we'd like to go ahead and have the system poll continuously, which means that it simply every time it completes a poll to see if there are any changes in the database, it will continue that process on over again. There will be varying ways in which you'd like to use the te this technology to make it most efficient for your organization. The demonstration that you just saw is an out-of-the-box integration leveraging a predefined maps and predefined schedules, uh, but you also have the ability to extend that functionality based upon perhaps business-driven uh, uh, modifications or specific development, custom development needs. You can customize the connector based upon your business requirements by altering schedules, transforming specific field values, or incorporating custom entity maps. So if you create custom entities in Microsoft Dynamics CRM, you can publish those entities, the web services for those entities by function of the CRM application, have those exposed to the connector and integrate that data into your ERP application. Developers can also extend the functionality of the connector by the, leveraging the included SDK or software development kit. Developers can do things like create new adapters for additional lines and business applications from templates, create new mapping functions for data transformation, or enhancing the ease of deployment for the adapters as well. The connector for Microsoft Dynamics can be acquired by placing a no charge order for registration keys with your Microsoft Dynamics ERP partner. Your Dynamics partner can also assist in downloading the connector for Microsoft Dynamics and possibly providing other services for the installation and implementation of the connector. Additional information for the connector for Microsoft Dynamics can be found at the connector blog located at the URL below. Contact your Microsoft Dynamics ERP partner today to start realizing the benefits of a truly integrated CRM and ERP solution brought to you by Microsoft Dynamics.